My name is Bob Richards. I'm the CEO of Moon Express, and I've been shooting for the moon for a few years now. It wasn't that long ago that I actually was on a mission to Mars, uh, the Phoenix Mars lander that uh, landed right about here. Um, not only was it a very cool logo, uh, but we had a very cool principal investigator named Peter Smith from the University of Arizona. Um, it was a great, great experience with Optech, Alan Carswell deve developing the Canadian contribution uh, that went on this lander uh, developed by Lockheed. Uh, here was the Canadian LiDAR system that uh, discovered snow on Mars. We, um, we launched uh, very early in the morning from Florida. It was a, just a fabulous launch. Uh, we could see Mars in the distant sky. As the uh, spacecraft uh, approached Mars uh, a little over six months later, um, we were all down at uh, JPL waiting for the, uh, you know, with biting our nails, waiting for the, uh, the results. Um, in an air world like Mars, oh, even though it's a very thin atmosphere compared to Earth, uh, you can use aerobraking. Uh, you can use the atmosphere in your favor for a landing system. You can use parachutes, slow the vehicle down from its hypersonic velocities. But, you know, in the end, you have to uh, make a, a hard landing uh, as softly as possible. So you use radar to uh, try to detect the surface. And in the end, you have to use rockets. And that's the scariest part. You know, it's the few minutes of terror that uh, you experience as you're trying to find out where the lander can find the ground softly enough and then deploy its instruments, and in this case, the LiDAR firing its lasers into the sky. And uh, it was a wonderful mission that lasted uh, over 90 days, accomplished all of its uh, goals. Uh, the surface of Mars uh, is not like the surface of the Moon, however. Uh, the Moon is, uh, in some ways, far more chaotic, uh, an airless world. Uh, its uh, surface hasn't been smoothed by weather. Rocks, hills, mountains. Uh, lots of hazards. Uh, the Apollo astronauts uh, found this out. Um, there's a huge boulder uh, beside my friend uh, Jack Schmidt. Uh, it was the robotic landers, uh, here's the Surveyor 3 back in the 60s, uh, that actually made landfall on the moon for the first time with a little bit of a land and hope. With the Google Lunar X Prize, we're going to have to do things just a little bit differently to ensure that we have a safe landing on this airless world uh, 250,000 miles away. Uh, we'll be using uh, commercial rockets. Uh, we believe the world will be watching. Uh, we're really excited about uh, participating in this uh, global challenge. Um, you know, what makes it special is sending a private spacecraft to another world for the very first time will be an epoch in history that uh, forevermore will change the future of what uh, people believe is possible in space. Um, Moon Express, uh, we want to do it our way too. We're uh, resident at the NASA Ames Research Facility. Uh, the NASA Research Park. Uh, this is the hover test building that we uh, utilize, uh, located in the shadow of the huge Hangar 1 facility, dwarfed uh, by its huge size. We have a collaborative program with NASA. Uh, took lots of planning to recommission the hover test facility that we needed to use. The building had been dormant, basically, for a number of years. Our young team uh, got to work and uh, worked out a lot of the systems. Um, it was uh, it was exciting days uh, when we first opened up that building uh, and uh, worked to make sure that we had the right people involved, including the University of Arizona. And there's Dan Wibben helping us with our trajectory. Great help from NASA, Rick Hertz and Nick Becker and others that helped us uh, recommission the facility. Um, we have, you know, a building that is uh, perfectly suited for testing uh, a rapid prototype lunar lander system. Uh, a lot of work went into it. You can see some of the uh, early stages of the development here. Uh, sensors all over the nets to tell us where the uh, system is. Um, very safe building. Um, this is a very dangerous business that we're in, and we want to make sure that our people are safe and have the right uh, training and procedures uh, so there are no accidents. Uh, it was uh, the uh, hover test vehicle developed by NASA that we chose to use as a, as a baseline, as a rapid prototype. A lot of people wonder why. Uh, but this is a very, very unique vehicle. Uh, the structure is the same, but a lot of it is very different. Uh, this is the system pictured in 2007, but we have our own system now. Uh, that's not it. The high-pressure cold gas system allows us to rapidly prototype the lander system and the avionics guidance, navigation, and control software. It allows our engineers to learn through many cycles uh, during a given day. And uh, we can adjust uh, the control systems uh, before we commit the flight code. And in this way, it's a very benign environment for rapid prototyping. Although cold gas and very high pressures allow us to replicate the propulsive characteristics of the engines, 
Uh, we're also developing uh, brand new software in avionics that's uh, gone into the vehicle by our Moon Express engineers uh, working collaboratively with NASA. Uh, a number of new technologies are necessary to introduce, including the radar system that uh, we, uh, we've introduced before, critical for landing. Also critical for landing are the legs themselves. Uh, not to be taken lightly, the legs are really the, uh, the most critical system and a very complex system of any landing vehicle. They have to be capable of absorbing all of the energy. And we'll talk to you more about that in a few more uh, videos to come. This feeling amazing 